What is up traders and welcome to a new daily market outlook for the major dollar pairs and of course gold. So with that said, let's dive straight in. So starting off with the dollar index, the dollar index of course has been moving down lower. Yesterday, however, was a day with a pullback after uh, faking out on this major swing low of 105.658. Overall, the daily has now closed outside of this ascending trendline twice indicating that there is more potential downside in play for the dollar. Now looking at the four hour time frame, the current close that just occurred literally um, yeah, a minute ago, um, provided us with a break of structure over here on this structural low. So we now have a four hour break of structure indicating that the current swing high is located over here and the current swing low is located over here. Of course, uh, first of all, what do we want to see? Well, we want to see and uh, notify which area of current demand is going to push price back in towards the upside. Because logically, after a break of structure, what do we expect? Price to pull back, right? As we can see, of course, every single time there's a break of structure, price eventually pulls back. So what I'm now looking for in the market is for where the dollar index is going to be pulling back from next. And that is, of course, from this area of liquidity paired with this fresh area of demand that I have my eyes open for. So the next area of price that I see the dollar index heading towards is 105,157. Um, so yeah, once that liquidation happens and this area of demand is hit, that is when I expect a pullback. So this further downside movement on the dollar index indicates for me that the major dollar pairs being Euro dollar, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar are all going to start pushing up higher to their respective supply zones. So moving on in towards Aussie dollar, because what we can see on Aussie dollar, of course, is that we've been ranging pretty heavily between this high and between this low. Uh, price has not been moving anywhere since Monday. Uh, yeah, of course, logic with all the uncertainty going on, but just to give you guys a quick overview of what's happening over here on the daily time frame. Now, from a daily perspective, um, what has been going on? Uh, the thing that I'm still keeping my eye out for is this swing high and this swing low, indicating that Aussie dollar overall from a daily swing perspective is still bearish. Of course, we had kind of like this V-shaped reaction with a liquidity grab above the highs, which some could see and could say is a break of structure in itself. Uh, however, according to my mechanical rules, does, uh, this doesn't count. So if you, for example, would make it count, and this would be your swing low, this would be your swing high over here, everything inside of here would be your pullback, right? So what you would then be looking at is kind of like this descending uh, wedge, uh, and especially if we focus on the most recent price action, this indicates that there is a potential kind of like descending channel going on, which could potentially push price up higher. This is the only thing that I'm keeping in mind. Overall, um, of course, the daily is still bearish from my mechanical perspective. Also, if we look at it from uh, the internal structure, we can say, okay, close below um, this low over here, meaning that this is your push down, everything inside here is your pullback, then again, push down, push in towards supply. Um, so the internal structure over here on Aussie dollar is also bearish, with this being current supply where we're situated in. So from a daily perspective, um, it is a higher probability that we are going to move in towards the downside. However, I am keeping in mind that we have this descending nature in price. So if the four hour is able to shift higher because this area of supply has failed so far to push Aussie dollar further in towards the downside, um, I will take into consideration um, that we can still move up higher um, and, for example, hit this fresh area of, and let me just check real quick, um, yeah, this area of daily supply once again, uh, kind of like in line with the overall structure that I'm seeing because more times than not, this descending nature of price will push price up higher, especially also with the dollar index, of course, at this time and day, um, it is indicating a further correction in towards downside, meaning that Aussie dollar would move up higher. Now, quickly going back in towards the four hour, however, when I look at this four hour time frame. Um, I do keep in mind that what we've seen is a change of character on the four hour. So um, yeah, if I'm correct, this is our change of character low, meaning that on the 15 minute, which is of course kind of like the trading time frame, we can also see, yeah, so this is pretty much what I outlined and explained in yesterday's market outlook. Um, what we've now seen is pretty much the 15 minute swing low get broken, meaning that this is now your swing high and this is now your swing low. Therefore, we are now happy to look for those potential shorts. What I'm waiting for at the moment um, is for this low to go. If we break that low, we see a pullback. Uh, 
um, wherever into what supply zone is going to be created inside of these candles, I will then be looking for that potential short. However, just keep in mind, manage it aggressively because based on the four hour, we are, um, or based on the daily, excuse me, uh, there is still some probability of us moving up higher, back up towards this fresh area of supply, um, especially after kind of like these overextend moves in towards downside, then this descending prior corrective price action, there is a high probability of us still hitting this zone, also with the dollar index, of course, having the potential to move down lower. So quite the extensive explanation, um, but I guess you guys know what I'm looking for um, for the day trading day ahead. Uh, just waiting for this low to go, which broke this high. Once we break that, look for a potential short. If we once again can break this high, um, I'm not going to be looking for any longs just yet. I'll be waiting for that daily high to go, of course, uh, and the four hour high to go as well. So Aussie dollar only trading it if we break this low over here. So that is Aussie dollar. Let's head over to Euro dollar. So Euro dollar, uh, what has been going on? Well, we've been pushing up higher, of course, in line with the DXY downside, because DXY downside means a weak dollar, means Euro strong, so Euro USD up. Looking over here at the daily, um, yeah, what can we see? Of course, after a break of structure, what do we expect? We expect a pullback. So what have we been seeing? Pretty much what I've been waiting for, of course, is the change of character on the daily. So the daily change of character indicates that there's gonna be a four hour break of structure on the four hour. So this is one of the biggest indicators that the overall daily swing is ready to start pulling back. For example, in towards the overall 50% mark of the swing range. So what I'm now keeping my eye out for is this fresh area of supply where your dollar can potentially start pulling back towards. Now looking at the four hour time frame, uh, four hour of course provided a break of structure over here already. Uh, afterwards we started pulling back, but nothing really significant. Um, so for your dollar at the moment, what I'm expecting, well, I'm expecting just further upside, at least in towards this fresh four hour area of supply and liquidation above kind of like this range over here. Once we move above that, I'll be happy to look for a short, trading the pullback back in towards the downside, for example, back down towards this area of demand over here before then looking for longs once again towards that daily area of supply. So far, um, from a 15 minute perspective yesterday, nothing interesting happened. Uh, you guys know that I was looking for a potential break of this low over here. As we can see, we just moved back down in towards this demand zone, price pushed back up. Nothing really interesting. We did get a liquidity grab after news, but again, I need candle closes. Um, so what happened during uh, the late New York session? Well, what we can see is we did get that break of structure. So a break of structure occurred um, then during the Asian session, of course, you know, guys, consolidation. So what happened there pretty much had uh, this supply zone, which was kind of like limiting price from moving upwards. However, that's why we don't trade your dollar in the Asian session, because now what has happened, uh, pretty much the high which broke this low, which is this high over here, has now been closed above, meaning that this is now your swing low, this is now your swing high. Um, so yeah, further upside from your dollar from my side is now expected. Looking at the four hour real quick again, uh, yeah, I am, or we are still located in supply, of course. However, um, if we're able to spike above that, I will then consider this area of four hour supply not fresh anymore. And I'll therefore be looking for potential longs, even though it's quite risky, um, but to trade it at least in towards this liquidity high over here and eventually also supply with a potential runner. So looking at it from a 15 minute perspective, um, yeah, just try and trade any continuation that you can get. Um, potentially look at, for example, this area of supply over here with this being your liquidation over here. So just keep in mind, also if we turn on uh, the Asian session tool, uh, then you could even potentially look for kind of like a low break or a low spike, uh, and then potentially trade, for example, this refined area of demand after a quick liquidity spike underneath the Asian lows, and then further upside continuation, because of course, as long as this low is respected, 50 minute is still bullish, four hour is also bullish, and the daily is making its pullback, therefore I am looking for the zero dollar longs. So quite the extensive explanation on your dollar, um, but hope you guys understand. Now, pound dollar guys, uh, looking at it from a four hour perspective, what are we currently seeing? Uh, what well, we're currently seeing pretty much a rejection um, of this four hour area of supply located over here. 
um, is actually is acting, excuse me, as resistance. I'm still looking for a push higher on pound dollar in towards daily supply. So daily supply is located, of course, over here. Uh, I'm looking at least for a push in towards there. However, we did see a daily change of character, of course, on this high over here. So this used to be our low, excuse me. Um, so this used to be our low over here, as we can see, kind of like just yeah, continuing with the overall downtrend. Um, if you just look at, at the candles themselves, you can of course kind of like see the overall trend like this. Then boom, okay, change of character. So the daily is now indicating a potential break uh, and potential pullback, um, at least of course in towards premium pricing. So let me just draw on that fib real quick. So at least back up in towards the gray zone, for example, in towards this fresh area of supply over here. Uh, before, of course, pushing back down once again. Now, looking at pound dollar, of course, after change of character, uh, and we don't always expect price just to impulse and just to impulse, uh, but after a change of character high, of course, this is pretty much as considered a break of structure, we expect a pullback, right? So we could start seeing a pullback, for example, in towards um, the 50% mark of the overall change of character range, which is gonna be this. So just keep your eyes out uh, for this daily wick. Now, moving in towards the four hour, um, if we look inside of there, what do we then have? I'm just going to delete the premium versus discount tool. Uh, we have that area of demand, which I was highlighting yesterday, um, this fresh imbalance candle over here. So just keep your eyes out for that imbalance candle. Um, but as long as the demand, demand chain, excuse me, is holding, um, all these zones that I have drawn on, sorry, it's a little bit messy, but all those zones which I have drawn on, and they might be a little bit more clear yet here on the one hour, as long as this holds, um, they were expecting higher prices, right? So yesterday what happened, we had another sell and then in towards the buy. So what happens overall, if you consider this the sell before the buy, you can just clearly see, okay, we push out of that sell before the buy, push back in, push back out again. So now uh, what are we seeing? We're seeing, however, that this high is failing to go. So we need to kind of like get that high uh, broken. Then I'll be happy to look for pound dollar longs once again. Uh, from, for example, this demand zone, which then takes out this high trend line liquidity, or you can clearly see kind of like price chopping up. So that means liquidity underneath the lows um, to then look for a high once again. Now, moving in towards the 15 minute time frame, you can clearly see that kind of the one hour is resonating with the 15 minute. So, for example, this is your low or this wick over here, uh, and this is your high. So, price pulled back in towards kind of like um, yeah, all the way to the extreme of the overall range and the range is just from this high all the way or from this low excuse me towards this high so now what we want is one more push up then a pullback then i'll be looking for example for longs with kind of like liquidity underneath the lows to then trade pound dollar up higher uh, otherwise if the low goes over here and the lows get taken out then based on uh, the four hour um, you're going to get a change of character then based on the daily um, you're also of course going to see uh, that potential pullback back down in towards that daily wick which i'm talking about also based on the four hour of course we've seen a break of structure right so what do we expect after a break of structure we expect a pullback so that's then kind of like an indication that that pullback is going to be coming into play so that's pound dollar then kiwi dollar um, so yeah kiwi dollar um, has been more stubborn than the other dollar pairs but it's also because it's not as um, yeah, reliant on the dollar index um, as the others. But overall, uh, demand is still holding, as you guys know from yesterday's uh, yeah, video. I'm looking for this low to go, because this is your change of character low. Once that low goes, I'm happy um, to look for potential for the downside, but um, yeah, still expecting further upside as long as this demand zone holds. So that is that. Um, yeah, if we see this demand zone yeah, fail, then uh, yeah, further potential downside from Kiwi Dollar. Also, looking at it from a 15 minute perspective, um, you guys know that I'm looking for yeah, this low to hold. So, like I mentioned yesterday, from this demand zone, there were potential longs. You could have capitalized uh, quite some pips if you went long over here, at least all the way back up and towards there, from like a break even point uh, located over here. But um, yeah, overall, uh, now you want to look for the internal structure on Kiwi Dollar to flip bullish again, because overall you can kind of see if we look at the internal structure, it's bearish, right? So kind of getting this, let me just quickly look. Uh, yeah, so this low went, so that means 
push down, pull back, push down, this low went as well, then this low went as well. However, every single time a low goes, you can kind of see straight away again um, a pullback, but now this high needs to go. So once this high goes, and for example, demand is created inside here, then I'll be looking to go long on Kiwi dollar. Um, not really looking at the shorts, which I just mentioned, uh, because of course the daily, or at least the four hour, excuse me, uh, still being bullish. So um, yeah, what you wanna see, of course, and what you expect is that when the four hour is bullish, you expect this to be a weak high and that weak high to go. And then after this high gets broken and closes above, then of course, we kind of like wanna be trading the pullback from, uh, for example, this supply zone over here. So that is Kiwi dollar. Then last of all, gold, XAUUSD. Uh, yeah, gold just pushing up higher. Um, took out pretty much that four hour area of supply which I was talking about yesterday. Took out this wick over here. Um, potentially could start reacting kind of like to support and resistance, but I'm still expecting 1901 to get hit with the uncertainty in the world. So yeah, four hour still expecting higher prices. Um, yeah, if we pull back in towards demand, I will be looking for another long back up higher in towards that 1900 region. Pretty much called the gold pullback all the way from down over here. Um, so yeah, just waiting for that to play out in line with the overall kind of like daily play um, that I'm looking at. And just to give you guys some perspective on, for example, Aussie dollar, um, what I'm talking about, like you have this overextend move, right? And then this ascending corrective price action. And then you can see you've got like this big drop. If we just do an invert chart for you guys real quick, you can kind of see, right? Like push down, corrective price action. Then if we go to Aussie dollar real quick, what you can see, and this is invert skill, you can see push down and then that correct correction, right? So that's kind of like uh, why I'm talking about potential upside movement back up into what's this supply zone. So yeah, guys, uh, quite a long video, but yeah, just a lot of concepts to explain, a lot of uh, yeah, thoughts to be spoken. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like and join the Discord community. Links in the description down below and wish you all a fantastic day. Thanks, guys.